Linear relationships appear everywhere, whether it's the relationship between speed and distance, quantity and price, or time studying and GPA, it's probably linear. Unfortunately, data is never perfect and we're forced to draw lines that approximate the linear trend. But what if there was a formula that creates an equation that perfectly represents the data? That is the point of a linear regression. To start, we need to come up with a system that evaluates how well a linear line approximates the data. These four points are particularly challenging because it's not terribly clear whether the data has a negative slope or a positive slope. Both seem to make a fair amount of sense here. The most obvious tactic is looking at the residuals. A residual is the vertical distance between the expected y value, given by the line, and the actual y value. Just by looking at the residuals here, we can see that a negative slope better represents this data. The residuals in all four points seem to be smaller with a negative slope. Your first thought is probably to just add the residuals up. However, there's a slight issue with that. A residual is a distance, and thus is always positive. If we do the expected y value minus the actual one, we'll end up with some negative values. One solution is to take the absolute value of the expected values minus the actual values. Again, this causes more problems. The first problem with absolute value is that you cannot take a derivative at the origin, so its derivative is not continuous. The more obvious issue is that the absolute value cannot be written as a polynomial function, which makes it hard to use within formulas. The simple solution here is to square the residuals. A parabola is always positive, like absolute value, but it's also differentiable and is a polynomial, making it easy to use within formulas. The fact that the differences are squared is the exact reason that this linear regression is called the least squares regression line, or LSRL. We are squaring each residual and adding them all up. I plotted four data points in the top graph. We're going to use the equation y equals mx plus b to approximate these four points. We can see that adjusting m and b will cause the line to shift and be more accurate. On the right, I've plotted a graph that shows the sum of the squares of the residuals in terms of m and b, where m and b are the slope and y-intercept, respectively. If xi and yi are data points, the expected y-value is mxi plus b, and the residual is yi minus mxi plus b, as shown in the equation in the top corner. As the line becomes more and more accurate, the function on the right becomes smaller until it reaches its minimum point. For anyone new who knows calculus, the word minimum should instantly make you think of derivatives. The derivative in the m direction and in the b direction should both be zero, since it's a global minimum. No point in any direction is lower than this particular point. As a result, we're going to want to take the partial derivatives with respect to both m and b, I wrote the simplified versions of both derivatives, since it's mostly just tedious algebra. Again, because we're looking for the global minimum of the function, we want both partial derivatives to equal zero. The summations are scary looking, and honestly aren't important to the algebra we're doing. We're interested in finding solutions to m and b, so we know the slope and y-intercept of the regression line. For now, let's replace all the summations with variables according to the key below. Let's first divide everything by 2. Now, we have a fairly simple set of linear equations. Feel free to solve this yourself, because again, it's just a bunch of tedious algebra. The solution for the slope should be a times z e minus c times d over b times z e minus c squared. We can then insert the summations back. Let's look at the summation of 1. If we add 1 n times, the summation will just equal n. Let's replace it with n. I also want to divide the top and bottom by n squared. You'll see why shortly. If we distribute the n's, it will make this nice equation. Now I want to introduce the idea of expected value. The expected value is what you expect to get. It's essentially an average. If z is a set of data points, the expected value of z is the sum of all its points divided by the number of points. The equation is given below. We can now replace every summation with a bunch of expected values. This vastly simplifies the equation. 
But better yet, we can write this in terms of variance and covariance. These are two terms commonly used in statistics to describe relationships between random variables. But for now, all you need to know is that the expected value of yx minus expected value of x times expected value of y is the formula for covariance. Similarly, the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x squared is the formula for variance. And ta-da, we get this simple nifty thrifty solution. One final step. We know the slope, but we don't know where the line is positioned. It's fairly reasonable to guess that the regression line will pass through e of x comma e of y. So let's test that. If we go back and solve for b, we find that b equals d times b minus d times a over b times e minus c squared. Because the sum of xi is equal to c and n is equal to e, we can find that the expected value of x is just c divided by e. Plug in m, x, and b, and we get this nasty equation. With a bit of algebra, we can simplify this. Alas, we get that y is equal to d over e. With the same logic as earlier, we can simplify this to the expected value of y. This consequently proves that the regression line will always pass through the point where the average x and the average y value meet. Finally, we can use all this information to simplify the regression line formula, giving us this nice and concise equation.